Hello, welcome back to my channel, or welcome for the first time if you've never seen my videos before. My name is Bryn, I am transgender and non-binary, and I make videos about those topics. Today I would like to talk about something that I have definitely mentioned in a lot of my videos, and I actually do have another video dedicated to this topic, but I had received a comment uh, probably within the last month or two that um, was saying they were hoping to see a little bit more detail in that video. And so I kind of wanted to go into more detail. So here's this video. <laughs> um, and that topic is being raised as a Christian when you are gay and or trans and the way that that affected me and my experience with that. If you have not seen my videos before, I was assigned male at birth and I was raised as a boy. I came out um, as liking boys when I was 14 years old. And when I was 17, I began questioning my gender. 18, I came out as a trans woman. And 21, I came out as non-binary. And I am now 25. Another bit of background information that is relevant to this. I mentioned this in my last video. Uh, I, I do have permission to talk about this. This isn't my information to share, <clears throat> but I, I did talk to the person and she said that she's okay with me sharing this. I have two mothers and one of them is transgender and she came out when I was about 10 or 11 years old and began transitioning then. <clears throat> and so that played a major part in how I saw not only gender, but also the way that I saw my family react to and treat her. And that kind of affected the way that I saw myself. <clears throat> so to start this video, right now I'm gonna talk basically about what it was like to grow up Christian before any of the gay shit happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so just to give an overview of the what what I believed and what I was taught and what my family around me believed and and my environment my community and all that kind of stuff so to start off I want to say when I say I was raised religious um this wasn't like a casual like like oh we go to church sometimes and we pray before we eat and like that's you know that's what we do and that's it you know this was like we went to church every Sunday. We always prayed before we eat. Like, you can't eat until you pray. This was like, we would go to vacation Bible school every time they had it. We would go to every single youth group retreat that we had. We would, like, anything that related to God or Jesus, we would do. We had a Wednesday night program with the church for the kids that we would always go to. The only way that we would ever miss church or the Wednesday night program is if we were sick and couldn't go or whatever but it was like we were very um loyal to the christian faith i guess <laughs> is, a, is a good way to put it and i never questioned anything because i was like five you know as a five-year-old you're not thinking i wonder if everyone else is a christian you know and i had a, a decent amount of friends that i went to school with who also went to my church and i remember being like baffled when they wouldn't come to church and I'd ask them why and they're just like oh I, we just didn't feel like going you know and I'm just like how is that an excuse like <laughs> like it, just, it seemed absurd to me that people would just casually not go to church on top of that in the community that I was raised in uh regarding Christianity um or at least the way that my cisgender mother believed um I don't know that everyone in the church feels the same as her but regardless I felt like the foundation of Christianity was based on the idea that Christians know best and everyone else knows nothing but that was really like that was basically what we were taught if you're not a Christian and you're doing these things that are ungodly um it's because you're letting the world influence you it's not because you thought about it yourself and came to a decision it's that you're weak essentially because you're allowing others to dictate what you believe um and so to branch out from the mindset that they give you you start to feel stupid or confused or you panic because oh my god i'm doing exactly what they said not to do and and there's these essentially there's these there's these feelings that you're conditioned to have um to hold you back 
from creating your own ideas or um or even in in some cases even being compassionate to others because to be compassionate to others you have to feel them on their level and it's it was almost like we weren't allowed to feel other people on their level because that would bring us down because we were up here and everyone else was down here and of course, like, this is stuff that, this is me reflecting back on this stuff. This isn't something that I consciously understood, um, you know, at the age of seven years old or whatever. This is, this is me looking back and being like, okay, this, like, this is what, this is what happened. On top of that, something that I noticed, if my cisgender mother would make a terrible, terrible decision that nobody liked, or it didn't make any sense at all, or it was so harmful to people, many times her response was, her response was basically just like, God told me to do it. And you can't fight with somebody if God told her to do it. And I noticed that it was something she felt stronger when there was more opposition against her. Um, because it's like, like I'm standing strong in my faith even when everyone around me doesn't like it, basically. And it's like, like from her perspective that made her extra strong because she was strong enough to stand alone in her power and not break or bend or wither to other people's whatever but it it, it really just kind of from what I noticed cut off the compassionate side of her and the understanding and the loving side of her and that's difficult to like that's, to me, that's the opposite of what, <laughs> how people are supposed to be. People should be learning to be more compassionate. People should be willing to understand or at least try to understand other people. But it just came to this point that she was more involved or more concerned with proving her, her faith and her perfection than she was with loving those around her or showing compassion to those around her um and she was too showing compassion to the people around her and especially her children and that created a lot of conflict um obviously <laughs> and <clears throat> um to give you a little bit of insight about to give you a little bit of insight about kind of where her mind was at and also the way that the things that she said affected how I saw things. Um, she made a comment at some point, it was near the beginning of <clears throat> my other mother's transition and she said something in the, along the lines of, well, your father would rather play dress up than be your dad. And you know, as a 10 or 11 or 12 year old kid or whatever, however old I was, like, that's really hurtful to hear that. Because when you phrase it that way, and I didn't understand about trans things, um, I didn't understand why somebody would have to transition. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute, but <clears throat> as, to, as to why, but to hear that, like, you're just choosing to play dress up because you don't even love your kids. And like that, it was that kind of lack of compassion that was spewed out again and again and again and lack of understanding that just, it took me a while to filter through that and realize that it wasn't true. Um, now to backtrack a few, like 30 seconds or whatever. Um, I didn't understand why somebody would have to transition because um, if you've seen my other videos, I, the way that I kind of see my gender is essentially that when I was younger, especially like before puberty and stuff like that, like, I really saw myself as a girl. Um, I felt okay with that. And as I got older was when I realized that I was non-binary. Um, and so I felt like I related to my trans mother on a lot of those feelings because she was over here feeling like a woman and I knew that I felt like a girl a lot but I didn't I didn't transition I didn't 
think about transitioning. I didn't really understand transitioning. And I also didn't quite understand it because the way that my mother was transitioning was very like stereotypical trans woman way to transition. And I didn't resonate with that specifically. So <clears throat> I, in my head, I essentially felt like we're on the same page. We have the same feelings. We're both boys and I'm not transitioning. And that made me feel like I had more power. Like I, was, I wasn't allowing vo the voices from non-Christian people. I wasn't allowing them to influence me. And so I was stronger than she was because she gave in to temptation, essentially. And I wasn't willing to see, to see her side. I wasn't really willing to listen to her. And when I would listen to her, all that was running through my mind is like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like you're just you're just brainwashed by these by these ungodly people. And the reason I felt that way about her was because that's how I was taught. So to translate that into later years when I came out as gay and then as trans and all that, I knew what that felt like to look at somebody and say you are 100% invalid. Nothing you say will ever convince me that you're who you are and you're just you're just wrong and you're stupid and like all these like really degrading negative things. I knew exactly what it felt like to look at somebody and think those things. So when I started coming to terms with who I was, I felt those feelings all the time because I knew that's how my cisgender mother felt and I assumed and felt like that is how the entire world feels because growing up my mother basically was my entire world and it was just it was hard to believe especially when you're taught that people who are sinning or going against God I was taught that they know that they're sinning they know that they're wrong they just lie to themselves and so I had this constant question in my head like am I just lying to myself and I spent so much time invalidating myself because I was so scared because I just felt it felt like a like a demotion almost to come out as trans or gay or anything like that I was demoting myself from Christianhood <laughs> and that didn't feel good even though there and even though there were parts of it that felt right or felt natural then that scared me that scared me even more because it was like oh my god I'm lying to myself so much that I actually feel okay with these things and it was like this really like mental mind fuck that just made everything so confusing so with all that um and getting into my coming out story a little bit <clears throat> I impulsively came out um I didn't plan it. I wasn't like, you know, <clears throat> I just, I, I, it was impulsive. I ended up meeting some guy that I liked and I kissed him in front of everybody. And there you go. Now I'm out of the closet. And <clears throat> I, there was that part of me that felt so ashamed. And then there was that part of me that was like, no, this is, this is, this feels better than anything else ever. <laughs> um, and I did I, I did believe that I was giving into temptation, but I also just didn't care. Um, <laughs> basically, because I was like, I can't change this. Like, I know at that point, like, I had liked boys since I was very, very young. And so it was just like, this is, this is, I know this isn't a phase. This isn't like, I just started getting these feelings and this and that. Like, I felt very valid in the sense that I was gay, but I felt very ashamed in the fact that I was expressing it and that I was identifying with it instead of pushing it down and ignoring it. <clears throat> but there was never a thought in my mind that thought I could get rid of the gay feelings. I don't think I remember ever feeling that. <clears throat> Um, so for a long time I felt really invalid basically because I, I felt so confused. I felt, I felt miserable whether I was gay or pretending to be straight, honestly. 
like it was like either way I felt like shit and <clears throat> so then that's why I eventually I guess was just like I guess I'll just be gay then because at least that feels good <laughs> like <laughs> like I don't know like it was like being straight felt like nothing being gay felt good and bad all at the same time <laughs> It's like, which do you choose, I guess. And it took me until I started questioning my gender um, to really feel like I was okay with my sexuality. And then, well, first off, I just got okay with the one thing and now I have to figure out all this other stuff. Not to mention, when I started transitioning, my attraction towards people completely shifted and like, I had to re-figure all of that out too. At least the religious factor wasn't there at that point. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but seeing the way that my transgender mother was ridiculed and spoken about as if she was just stupid. Like that was really the vibe that I felt from my cisgender mother talking and even other members of my family. Um, not us kids, but just the things that I would hear and stuff like that. And people in the church like my sister and her mother's friends like <clears throat> it was like yeah the vibe was that she's just really stupid and selfish basically and especially because she had kids it was like a bigger thing than me because I didn't have a, a wife and kids so I wasn't like ruining anybody else's life when I came out but with her it was like even worse um <clears throat> And I think too, a lot of people in my family, and they probably still feel this way, are just like, oh, you're just messed up because your other parent is messed up, basically. Like, it's still a completely rude and disrespectful way to invalidate me, but <clears throat> um, because that's still, it's like, oh, you can't make your own decisions. You're just following in the footsteps of somebody else. But they at least, I guess, give me a little bit of compassion. It's like a pity pity thing and I, I don't even I don't know that that's how they feel I like I wouldn't be surprised if they believe that way I guess is what I'm trying to say and I because of all this upbringing because of the way that I saw my mother treated when she transitioned I felt so strongly when I started questioning my gender I have to prove myself because these are all the thoughts that are running in their mind. So I have to do something to contradict all of those thoughts or else I'm never going to be valid. And I put a lot of pressure on their understanding of me instead of my understanding of me. And that made things very complicated. Um, I do have a video, if you're interested, on my life as a trans woman. I'm pretty sure it's the last video. I'm pretty sure it's the last video I uploaded. Um, but I'll have it up here and down in the comments below as well. But, or not the comments, the description box. <clears throat> but I, I don't think I talked too much about religion in that one. I can't quite remember. But I felt so strongly that I had to prove who I was. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I think I did. Because this was the way that I grew up, you know, my community was my church and my family. And... Because that was my whole community, that was what I assumed the whole world felt like. And so coming out as trans just immediately felt invalidating because I was like, nobody believes me. And that pushed me to be extremely feminine. It pushed me to express myself in ways that wasn't really expressing me. And it was it, my transition somehow became all about everyone else and I, I didn't understand that that's what I was doing and I didn't understand the pressure I was putting on myself and why and it was just very confusing and on top of that with being non-binary and not being stereotypically feminine or resonating with androgyny like all those things felt invalidating. Instead of saying, this is who I am, I would think those things make me a boy. And I'm not a boy. I don't want to be a boy. I'm not a boy. 
and so I tried to cut off every single thing that could like connect me to malehood whatsoever and it made me miserable <laughs> it made me really miserable I remember being sad walking through Target and being sad that I couldn't shop in the boys section anymore I <clears throat> like I would wear makeup. I don't even like makeup. I am wearing eyeliner right now. I can't remember the last time I wore something that wasn't eyeliner. And even then, I probably haven't worn eyeliner for like a month at least. Like I just don't, I don't care about makeup, but I did care about makeup then because it helped prove that I'm not a boy. And, and my whole transition basically was wrapped around the idea of validating myself to other people. And I never spent the time to validate myself to me. For the record, I don't speak to my cisgender mother anymore. I haven't spoken to her since maybe like 2016 or something. I don't know. 2015. It's It's been a while. She kicked me out for being trans. I think that helped me see a little bit more clearer because my environment wasn't being bombarded with you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. Like... I was able to kind of let go of that. Not right away. It took me a long time. Like, it wasn't like as soon as she left, I'm like, oh, I can see clearly. Like, because that was what I was taught from day one. So I had to essentially break down my entire belief system and bring it all back up. And to break down a belief system that tells you that breaking down your belief system will send you straight to hell and is the worst thing you can ever do and makes you stupid and invalid and dumb and um selfish and self-absorbed and like all these negative things it's really hard to break through that and just do it anyways and I don't know how I had the confidence to do it exactly I don't I don't know where that drive came from but I was able to do it and I'm really happy that I was being non-binary too came with its own set of struggles because being non-binary was something that I'm sure like I know my mom didn't even hear about it or didn't understand it because I remember being really young I'm pretty sure it was before my other mom transitioned <clears throat> I remember I was watching something on TV where somebody I don't know if they were agender or if they were like gender fluid or something but they were like somewhere in the realm of non-binary and my mom walked in and <clears throat> I, I don't remember how the conversation started or anything, but I just remember saying like, oh, well, sometimes there's people who feel like both or neither or something along those lines. And she was just kind of like, and like that look, I was just like, okay, like I'm stupid. <laughs> like that that's stupid apparently, okay. Like, <clears throat> and that, that weighed on my heart for a long time. Like the look on her face was just like, that's so confusing and dumb and how can you even say that? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I don't think she was like intending to like say that with her face, but like <laughs> that's the way that I perceived it. And so then, you know, coming out as non-binary or fig figuring out that I was non-binary <coughs> just made things that more frustrating and confusing. And ugh, it was confusing for me because I had Christian friends and I had gay friends and I had nobody who was both. And so the idea of taking what my gay friends said to heart, which were things that validated me and things that made me feel important and not stupid and understood and all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't allow myself to take it to heart because I would think, but they don't understand. They don't understand because they're not Christian. They, they don't have these same beliefs as me. And that's, that's part of the reason. There's so many reasons why it took me so long to figure out who I am, but, but that was something that was hard too. I felt completely isolated because two of my biggest parts of my identity were, I couldn't, f they were conflicting with each other and I had no reason to believe that they would ever <clears throat> not conflict. And so it was like, you have to choose one. And for me, it ended up being a good thing. I'm glad I chose, um,
I'm glad I chose to be myself and go through all of that. Um, and I know there's people who don't choose. There are people who feel content with being gay or being trans and being a Christian. And if that's your thing, go for it. Like, I'm not trying to sit here and say what you should do or that there is no way to blend those two things together. Um, but it wasn't something that I was able to do, or at least not something that I felt comfortable doing. And for me, the Christian faith was just, it just had so many negative impacts that there was like, it was like, <clears throat> you know, like if you're like dating someone and then they treat you terribly for like years and years and years and then you leave them and then suddenly they change and they're better and you're just like, uh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you've already done the damage. Like that's kind of how I felt <clears throat> or feel about Christianity is like the damage is done and I, I can't find any sort of solace in it. And that doesn't mean that you can't if that's something that you want to do. Um, or something that you feel comfortable doing. But for me, it was just like, no, like, I'm sorry. There's just, I can't. <laughs> yeah. So if there are any of you that are feeling this way or have felt this way or are feeling extremely confused and conflicted, um, and feeling like, feeling like, learning who you are and being who you are is degrading or stupid or any sort of negative word that I've used in here or that I haven't used. Um, if you relate to that, I do want to say you are valid and <clears throat> there is nothing wrong with you for being gay or for being trans. And I know that might be... <clears throat> hard to believe and just hearing me say it is like maybe not enough but hopefully it is enough um because I'll say coming out on the other side and working through all of this and coming to a place where my beliefs are my own and I don't feel the need to prove my gender or my beliefs or my anything to anyone else um it's freeing and I never would have felt that way had I not let go of those limiting beliefs that I had. Um, and, you know, if you can feel free while still believing things from Christianity, that's great. If you have to let it all go, let it all go, you know, whatever it is, it's up to you. I don't, I, I don't want to come across as me saying the best thing to do is to reject Christianity for me, that was the best thing to do. For everyone, probably not. It's, it's up to you. Um, but I do just kind of want to give that sort of validation and understanding because I know how that feels to like feel so isolated and it sucks. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, for the rest of you or for all of you, I guess. <laughs> I hope this video helped. I hope this video <clears throat> was interesting uh and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day I look forward to putting out another video <clears throat> um yeah so have a good day